Welcome to the Mindy Paul Show, the podcast where we discuss mind, money, business and manifestation all in one mic. Having worked with business owners, CEOs and executives in industries from accountants, lawyers, dentists, coaches, consultants and even Hollywood producers, just to mention a few from across the globe on how to earn more and work less and attract an abundance of your dream clients. Now, their circumstances may differ, but my message remains the same. You've got so far doing things your way. Now, if it's not working your way, why not try someone else's way? That's been proven to work. So what do you say? Are you ready to give mine a shot? So on today's podcast, I'm going to be speaking to you about money. Yes, money, the paper stuff. The stuff that we all work for. Now, ever since I was a young kid, I was always taught not to talk about money. If I made a bit of money, my mum would say or my dad would say, don't talk about money. You're going to jinx yourself. What is jinxing? So I'm really curious to find out uh, around your beliefs about money. Were you taught about money? Was it okay to talk about money? I always say there's two things that you don't talk about at the dinner table. Guess what they are? One is money. And the other one is sex. You're not allowed to talk about them yet. Everybody wants them. Don't tell me that you don't want sex at one point or another. Don't tell me that you don't want some money. Because without sex, we wouldn't be here. And without money, we wouldn't be here. Think about it. Money is so important. We want to feed our families. We want to live in a nice, warm place. We want to live somewhere safe. We want to have good shelter. Now, that doesn't happen without money. Think about where you are right now, the environment that you're sitting in. You're listening to me on some form of a device that costs money. I'm using equipment that costs money. So, yeah, money is probably the second most important thing, probably after oxygen, because you can't really do fuck all else without money. You travel to and from work. You go to work, why? For money. Yeah, you go to work for money. You don't, well, we're supposed to go to work for enjoyment. But outcome that you want when you go to a job, when you have a transaction, when you do business... Is for money. Now, what are you going to exchange that money for? You're not going to just take the money, okay, and put it in your bank. Money sitting down in your bank is no good, right? Think about it. So we have to earn money and put that money to use, put it into circulation. So we've got to get used to the idea that money is a spiritual idea. Money is God's idea. If you don't believe in the universe, it's a universal idea. It's God's idea. We simply use money to exchange for goods, services and products. Everything that comes into our lives, we need money. Now, if you want to help more people, I speak to lots of people quite often and they say, well, I ask them, what do they want to do? Yeah, Mindy, I want to help people. I want to provide for my family. I want to retire my husband, my wife, my parents. I want them to give up their job, pay their mortgage. And yet when it comes to asking for a sale, they feel so awkward. It's like they're begging. Like a lot of people, when they get into a transaction, they're building up, they're speaking to somebody, nurturing their prospects, uh, forming relationships, you've got your branding up and running, you're producing content online, off- offline if it is, you're recording podcasts, you're writing posts, social media posts, emails. And when you get your prospect to the level of where you're on the verge of exchanging the money, you're on the verge of like selling them your products or services, why is it that some people feel so fucking awkward in asking for the transaction. I've spoken to so many people, Mindy, I just can't close a sale. I just can't sell. Because when it comes to the money part, I don't want them to think I'm desperate or greedy. I'm like, come on, why are you doing this for? Because I want a nicer home, I want a car, I want to do this. Okay, well, without you asking for the money, guess what? Transaction is not going to take place. Okay, so we've got to get, we've got to understand that money is just a tool Back in the day, they used to be trading like goats and sheeps for like bread and cheese. Okay. Now, would you feel awkward about swapping a loaf of bread for a cow? No, you wouldn't. Would you be feeling awkward about, you know, swapping some milk, right, from your cow to someone who's got some cheese? You wouldn't. So why why do you, why do people feel awkward when it comes to money? Seriously, today's podcast, I want you to really eliminate The idea, if you do have the idea, which most people do, that money is wrong. We hear statements like money is the root of all evil. I don't even know what that means. You know, I'd say the lack of money is the root of all evil because people will like kill for money. People rob other people. They would cause harm, fraud people, even their own parents sometimes. 
You think about it, you hear stories about, oh, he did this to his parents and left them with nothing. And now they've got no money. All the life savings are gone. So tell me, is the lack of money not the real problem here? What would you rather have? Would you, they say money's not, money's not the root of all happen. You know, money doesn't make you happy. Money doesn't make you happy. Okay. Does not having money make you happy? Does it really? Think about it. So if money doesn't make you happy, does a lack of money make you happy? If it if it does, if the lack of money makes you happy, I will give you my bank details and you can transfer all of the money that you've got into my bank if you want. But now you probably think, now you're being ridiculous. Well, I'm not. Okay, so would you rather be like, imagine that you're in a dark place, right? Listen, when I've been in a dark place. I've been in a dark place with no money, okay? And it was fucking dark. I've also been in a dark place when I've had some money. But I can tell you one thing. The time when I had some money and I was in a dark place, guess what? I had choices. I could go out. I could buy myself something. I could get help. I could get professional help if I wanted to. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a dark place and you've got no resources, money is simply a resource. Money is a resource that allows you to go out and buy yourself experiences, your family experiences really allows you to do that so think about how many sales that you've probably missed out on in the last five years if you've been in business for 10 years 20 years i want you to think about how much this belief around money has actually really cost you the thing is nobody really puts a price on it nobody really like reflects on it well well i've got a lack of money it's costing me my gold no it just hasn't cost you your gold but look at what you've lost out in the past 5 10 20 years well however long you've been in business because you weren't able to ask for the sale because you felt so awkward, because you didn't want people to judge you. You didn't want people to think, oh, he's greedy or she's greedy. All she wants is the money. So what I always say, look at your product or service and just think about how will it enrich somebody else's life? What will they gain from buying your services? Whether you're an immigration solicitor, right? Great one. You're an immigration solicitor. You've got a dude or dudess. And they want to bring their partner over. They've got challenges. And you know you've got the solution to bring them over to the UK or the US, wherever you are. Now, what's going to be the outcome of you helping your prospect? Look at the lifestyle changes that person will be able to make. Think of the quality of the life they'll have, okay? Think about how many people they can impact. Maybe there's someone that wants to start a family. Listen, we get into the Western world, it's a lot easier. You know, my parents are from India. And I don't, listen, there's rich and poor people in every, every country, right? But majority of the people want to come here to improve the quality of their life, wherever, it's, wherever you're in the US, you're listening to this, wherever you're in Germany, wherever you're in the UK. So think about your prospect, how it's going to benefit. Maybe it's a spouse trying to bring the partner over. What's the reason for them coming together? They want to be together. They want to love each other, want to have a relationship together, a personal one, an emotional one, a spiritual relationship. They want to be close together so they can support each other through hardship. They can you know, work together and build their future. Now, you can't put a price in that. But I've had this when I've spoken to some clients in the past and their, their fee was like five or six thousand pounds. It's eight thousand. I'm saying that you can charge more than that. But I can't. I feel bad because, um, you know, they're trying to bring their partner over. I said, well, <laughs> don't feel bad because they're trying to bring their partner over. Do your best. Now, you can't do your best. You can't have resources if you if you're like on the breadline yourself if you're not invest in your business you ain't got a team you can't grow your team you you know you can't have the facilities that you need you can't reach the people that you need now look more money that you have the more people that you can reach with it so think about how this is a great great um, analogy right we're talking about an immigration solicitor you're thinking what the fuck's that going to do me i'm a coach <laughs> or i'm a speaker but same principle right now without your help you know without your help you can't help them. So you've got to sell your services to them. Remember, you're not selling a product. You're not selling a service. You're selling an outcome. I don't sell coaching. People say to me, well, Mindy, how much is your coaching? I said, you shouldn't be asking. That's the wrong sort of question because I'm not selling you coaching. I'm selling you a result, you know. So, well, how much do you want to be earning a month? Oh, I'd love it if I can get to 20000 or 50000 Okay, well, let's, let me show you how to get to 100000 Now, you see, I'll help somebody to figure out how much they want to earn, a goal. And then my question is, okay, you want a hundred thousand, you want a million. Okay. Why do you want it? And a lot of the people freeze when I ask them this question. I just, I, 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 because I want to buy a car, because I want to buy a home, uh, because I want to retire my mum, my dad. Okay. But why do you want to do that? 
Let's go deeper. Let's go some layers deeper. Why do you want the car? Oh, I just, I'd, I'd love a Range Rover. Okay, but why? You don't just want a Range Rover because it looks nice if, the, if you're into Range Rovers. You want the Range Rover because of how it's going to make you feel when you're driving that beast. How are you going to, maybe you've got your friends, families, a part of your image, maybe. You want to speak, you want to feel special. Now, I've got, you know, I've bought myself a car. It's a nice green Porsche, it's a beast. And I didn't buy it because it's green and it looks nice. I bought it for how it's going to make me feel. I brought it because when I was a young kid, someone let me down. Someone promised me a drive in the Porsche and they didn't turn up. And I was heartbroken. Okay, eight years old, I'm a kid sitting there, got told that, you know what, it's a 9 to 8. Check out, go on to Google, say, check out the 9 to 8 Porsche in Burgundy. Now you look at it, you'd be embarrassed if somebody offered you a lift, you wouldn't even get in it. Okay, so I remember a neighbor's friend came around told my dad that, you know, tell your son, my dad said, look, my son really likes your car. He goes, well, tell your son, it's Sunday tomorrow, I'll come out and take him for a drive in it. And this dude didn't turn up. And I sat there the whole Sunday, little kid. Can you imagine the cute version of me? Well, I'm cute anyway, but young eight-year-old version of me with tears running down my eyes, crying to my mama, he didn't come with my car. I was waiting for him. And he didn't show up. And I made myself a promise that when I'm old enough, I'm going to buy myself a Porsche. So this is a relationship that I have with Porsches because I have a very deep connection with the brand because that was what sparked, ignited something within, within me because I didn't want to feel the, the pain of not having any money. So I promised myself that I'm going to get a Porsche. So I go on, every time I go and buy a Porsche, it gives me like um, a sense of satisfaction. Like I've actually achieved a childhood dream and it, I'm so grateful for that because had that not happened to me, right, I wouldn't have got the car along with the other things. So I had had a desire to create wealth, to create money, to create income. So I got comfortable with, well, I was really uncomfortable with not having any money because, you know, the reason why I didn't have, we didn't have a Porsche because we didn't have much money in the house. We, I'm not saying that we grew up poor. You know, my mum and dad worked hard, worked in regular jobs, okay? And I was told that if you want to be successful, you know, you've got to, you've got to get, become a doctor, lawyer, engineer, you've got to get a good education. And I was as thick as fuck at school. I can barely spell. So... I knew that I needed some money, and the only, the only other way I knew that someone could accumulate money is through business. Now, I had no interest in education, but I had interest in accumulating money, so the only option that I had left was to become an entrepreneur. I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was then. So I became fascinated with people who created money, especially those who made it from, like, the rags to riches stories. All right? So I really focused on the rags to riches, and that gave me inspiration that if it can happen to these people, guess what? It can happen to you. And so now what the Porsche, what I'm getting at is I didn't buy the Porsche because it's a nice fast car, how fast it goes and the roof coming down. I bought the Porsche because it made me feel a certain way. It fulfilled a dream. So whatever you're selling right now, I want you to think about what is it that you're really selling? Are you really selling what you think you're selling? Are you really selling what you think you're selling? You got a coffee shop, right? You're not selling coffee. You're selling a place where someone can come with their friend or family, sit down and have some enjoyable time together. And you can't place a price on that coffee. You know, the coffee's, the coffee's, what, £7 here? You can get it for 99p down in McDonald's. Okay, that's cool. But do you want to be sitting around with a bunch of, like, yobs? No, come on. If you want to have a business meeting, right, you want to be in a nice environment, maybe you're entertaining someone, you want to go to a nice place, right? Where you can sit down, you're not going to be disturbed. There's not going to be kids running around. Well, there might be kids running around, but you might get some posh kids running around. <laughs> not swearing. <laughs> not saying they don't swear either, but, you know, I'm just having a little bit of a laugh here with you. So what, what are you selling? You think about Louis Vuitton, all these brands. They're not selling a logo, okay? They're not selling a logo. They're selling quality merchandise that makes people feel special. I recently brought myself a Louis Vuitton suit. I didn't buy it because it had Louis Vuitton on it. I simply walked in LV, I was going to buy myself a belt for 300 bucks, and this suit just caught my eye. And I thought, that's a nice suit, and I tried on the jacket, and as soon as I tried on the jacket, it made me feel so good. I'd never felt a jacket that I put on where it's cut so fine and it fitted me snug. I didn't even look at the price, I thought, look, this is making me feel good, this is keeping me in an elevated state. I'm feeling good. And then I didn't even look at the price. Because the price wasn't really important. The, what, I couldn't justify this at one point. And then I tried on the trousers. Now I tried on the trousers. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And I'm like, dude, you look good. And I had people complimenting me in the store. Not staff. Just people. Like, But I felt good. 
So I thought, right, I'm going to buy this. I have no intention of buying it, but this is when you want to buy something, you should be able to just buy something. Okay. So it's really important that we get our money right, that we get a money mindset right. Money mindset is something that people talk about all the time, but not really understanding it. What does money mindset mean to you? Really think about money mindset. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Bit of confusion, perhaps? For me, many years, I was in, into personal development. I was going to seminars and stuff. I was, I was <laughs> watching webinars around money mindset, people talking about money mindset. And I, I just recently realized, like maybe like a few months ago, I didn't really know what that fucking meant. Money mindset. Oh, the five-day money mindset training. Oh, right, what's that then? Oh, your money mindset. You know, are you comfortable around money? Are you not comfortable about money? How is your mindset around money? When we talk about the mind, we're actually talking about the subconscious mind. Money mindset. Because money mindset doesn't happen in your conscious mind, in your thinking mind. Money mindset happens in the subconscious, which is the emotional part, which is in control of your beliefs. And this is what the law of attraction responds to. Whatever you've got in that subconscious mind, in your emotional mind. And the universe responds to whatever you're holding in that subconscious mind. This is why people try to visualize and they sit there for hours and then <laughs> I used to be one of them because that's how I know. Putting all of these um, fancy meditations on YouTube, like the four to eight hertz with the frequency gets your brain to a certain frequency, put your headphones in and you're doing that for like 30 days and nothing's happened. Well, what the fuck's going to happen? Come on. The only time anything ever is going to happen is when you shift the subconscious mind, right? Now, you've probably got, if you're listening to this right now, you will have something going on around money. You you could be a six-figure, seven-figure earner already, but you want to get to, like, the higher levels. Okay, you're not here for the fun of it. Mind, money, and business. You're listening, you know, you're listening to this. This is my brand, Mind, Money, and Business. So you're here because you have some sort of, we can say challenge around money. Now, I'm not saying that you're broke or you're hung, you know, you ain't got enough. You could you could be a multimillionaire, but you've got a challenge going into maybe you want to get to that first hundred million. There's always a challenge and there's always a mindset shift that we've got to have if we want to get to that next level. I mean, when I say next level, I don't talk about like going from earning like, you know, 100K a year to like 150. I'm talking about you have to have a shift if you want to go from 100K a year to like a million a year. So you've got to have that shift at that subconscious level. So we all have like beliefs around money. I do, which I'm working on all the time. So I get to a certain level. I remember when I was earning 2K a month, okay? I couldn't see past getting to 2,500. I could nowhere see me getting to 5K a month. And, you know, I thought if I can earn 5K a month, I can retire. You know, I'll have a, like a huge house, six bedrooms. I'll have about seven cars. I'll have a Lamborghini, Ferrari. Me thinking like five grand is going to buy me all of this. I mean, come on, the insurance is going to cost you that a year. I didn't know I was unaware. So, you know, I I went from like, I remember 2K, I remember like getting to 10K a month. That was the first jump I had. I went from 2K to earning 10K a month and it happened like magic. And I remember Bob Proctor, who's, who's my mentor, he's passed away this year. I remember when, you know, he said, Look, how much money do you want to earn? And I said, like 10,000. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it because you don't need to know how you're going to do it. And then I went from 10,000 to 26,000, something like that. It was within like weeks. Then I went from like, stayed at 25K for a bit. Then I hit like a 50K goal. Then went to 100, went to 80, 100, stayed at 100 for a bit, had to do the work, stayed there for quite some time, too long in fact. Well, that's a good problem to have, right? You're at 100 grand a month and you're stuck there. It's not a bad thing to do. But then I went to like 250 and 400K and this all happened with me getting more and more comfortable around money, understanding how the energy of money really works. You know, so I had that mindset shift at the subconscious level. And now I'm having that same challenge now, speaking to you now. But the difference is I know exactly what I've got to do now to have those shifts. Okay, because I've experienced them. I've gone from like 2K. Within five years, I'd say, I've gone on from earning 2K to over 400K a month. 2K a month, working 100 hours plus per week. For many, many years, I was stuck at that 2K mark. Wow, it's painful. I look back now, I'm like, fuck, how did I survive and I wasn't even surviving. You can't survive on 2,000 a month when your outgoings are more. Okay, then up to now, like doing like 400K a month within sort of the space of five years has taken me to do that. But maybe the last two years have really started to like accelerate because 
you know, I'm really working with that subconscious. I really understand how this works. This is why if you look at, my, you know, my clients, check out my um, my Facebook group. It's called Mind, Money and Business. And now it's only for you if you're a business owner. All right. Now go check out what some of my clients are doing. Many of them like get to 100K a month within like weeks, within eight weeks, nine weeks, multiple times. Not just the one, didn't just get lucky. I know what I'm talking about, you know, and my results speak for, for themselves. My previous results when I didn't know what I was doing, when I wasn't in a, in a good place with my money mindset, okay, then I remember Bob used to say, when you get it, you get it. And then when I got it, I knew that I got it because my income shot up like a rocket. Now, I'm seeing people do this all the time when I speak to people and they said, well, Mindy, I've been in business for like 15 years. I've never earned more than 5,000 a month or 10,000 a month. You know, I'd really love to get to 50,000. I'd love to get to this and I don't know how I'm going to do it. I know all about the law of attraction. I've read, I read Think and Grow Rich. I've read The Science Again Rich. I've, I've watched The Secret. You know, um, I've read Think and Grow Rich about 20 times now. Okay, well, you if you've read it 20 times, you've only read it 20 times. You're not, you're not getting this at the subconscious level because if you di if you knew it at the subconscious level you'd be you'd be earning what you want to earn and here's the other thing most people think they get it but they don't they get it on the conscious level where it's just knowledge okay you ask them 10 questions about the book they could probably answer all 10 questions and they'll get them right but come to the money side the money's not right so before we wrap up today i want you to really think about how much money you've been earning over the past five, 10 years, how much has it really multiplied? Has it gone up much or is it about the same? Well, if it's about the same, maybe you've gone up a bit, you come down, you go up, you fluctuate between two amounts. That is because your money mindset is set there. Okay, money mindset. So your mind, your money is set with your mind. Money mindset. So your money is set in your mind, in the subconscious mind at the certain level. Now, we've got to show you how to break that. And this is what you're going to learn by listening to some of my podcasts. I invite you to my Facebook group. If you haven't joined it, Mind, Money and Business, go check it out. Okay, and also my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Mindy Paul, find it. Like it, share it, comment. I think that's what you're supposed to say, right? But anyway, listen, I want to thank you all for your time. I hope you got some value from this today. And until next time, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Mindy Paul Show. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, be sure to check out the show notes where you can find helpful links to learn how to reach your personal and professional success. Thank you again. Until next time.